Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Next Center here in Fort Myers, Florida. Autoimmune diseases are just increasing in frequency, so I've made a few videos on it. And many people have the right diagnosis in the sense that they've been told they have lupus or they have celiac disease or uh, vitiligo, psoriasis, different peripheral neuropathies, granulomatosis, sarcoidosis, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia. You know, there's like over a hundred autoimmune diseases. Sometimes somebody will come in where it's just descriptive. Like they'll say you have chronic inflammatory disease or you have Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. And anybody who, so what most people don't realize is most diagnoses, they do nothing to tell you what's actually causing it. Like in other words, somebody has inflammation in the bowels and they say you have inflammatory bowel disease. Okay, you have inflammatory bowel disease. Like in other words, you get in a colonoscopy and, they, and there's a lot of redness there. You have an endoscopy and there's a lot of inflammation in your stomach. Right, but that doesn't tell you what's causing it. Well, the doctor gave me a medication. Well, you know the medication, like the person doesn't have a medication deficiency as causing the autoimmune disease. Like let's agree there's plenty of medications, biologics, Enbrel, Humira, that get the symptoms way down, but because you still need the medication, it means the disease likely is not only ongoing, but progressing because almost every medical condition is progressive. So an autoimmune disease of the digestive tract, what would be the most logical thing that would inflame the digestive tract? It would be food, right? It'd be not absorbing food or eating toxic food or eating food that you're sensitive to. Right, so that's why from a holistic standpoint, often to stimulate the immune system or get an immune system dysfunction better, often it starts with a proper diet and a healthy lifestyle. And autoimmune just means that the body's attacking itself. And what are the different ways the body can attack itself? One, it can attack the food you eat, right? It can attack your thinking, right? If you have thinking like I'm not good or I hate another person or you hate your job or you hate who you live with or there's all kinds of bickering, right? The body might start attacking itself because your thinking is attacking yourself. These are all the different triggers, various triggers, right? Some people go to holistic providers who have autoimmune diseases and they get them off of medication they get rid of the metals in their body by chelation or get all your mercury fillings out. I had my mercury fillings out when I was in my 30s. Reduce stress. Some people get tested for various infections, Lyme disease, babesiosis, mold. They might get somebody on hormones to try to get the body in a repair mode and of course various food antigens. And then there's over a hundred different kinds of autoimmune diseases. So if you have a systemic disease and nobody can seem to know the cause, the first thing is to do a healthy lifestyle, see a holistic provider. I get involved with it when that stuff didn't resolve it. You know, this person tried to fast, like you could fast and see if, uh, the blood markers for autoimmune disease go down just by a juice fast, that would be a good way to do it. Another way to see if you have a structural issue is you could work on your neck curve or you know raise your computer or sleep with your head tilted up on your side and see if the autoimmune gets better. If it gets better by changes in your neck posture, it's likely that the vagus nerve, which is the nerve supply that gets rid of inflammation in the body. It must be that you either have a block in the vagus nerve inputs getting through or there's an injury to the vagus nerve. So this just kind of talks about all the different 
autoimmune diseases and how with autoimmune disease, the immune system is confused. It's recognizing your own cells as being invaders, so then it starts attacking it. So when somebody has a positive ANA, well, ANA is anti-nuclear antibody, and that means the body's producing antibodies against the nucleus of every cell. Well, that's terrible. Like, you don't want your body to make antibodies against itself. Often people with autoimmune diseases aren't thinking about do I have a neck component causing the autoimmune disease or making it worse? So somebody who had a head trauma or neck trauma and then a year or two later got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, there's probably a correlation, right? Or if you have a lot of clicking, popping, grinding in your neck or neck tension or headaches and that's what started the autoimmune disease or it's a major component of it, you likely have a neck component. Ligament injuries in the neck from poor lifestyle, the bent over forward head lifestyle can then cause injury or impingement to the vagus nerves. And basically you end up with systemic toxic inflammation, which is seen by blood tests such as C-reactive protein, sed rate, or autoimmune antibodies. And then when you have a neck injury, especially with the forward head, the ligaments get stretched out. And then if they get stretched out in the upper neck, it's going to injure where the DNA of the vagus nerve ganglion is. So the cell body of the vagus nerve, it starts dying. And when enough nerve cells die, the size of the vagus nerve goes down. And we call that vagus nerve degeneration and the condition cervical vagopathy. Then the various organ systems of the body get less vagus nerve electricity to them. So then with the heart, the heart rate will go up and an arrhythmia might even occur such as atrial fibrillation. In the lungs you get leaky lungs. So leaky lung means that the lung is more hypersensitive to antigens such as pollen or different things that you inhale so you can get asthma you know from cervical vagopathy. If it occurs in the liver, you might get liver degeneration. You may get in the gallbladder, gallstones, sluggish, a sluggish a gallbladder. If, it, if the vagus input to the spleen isn't there, you might get systemic inflammation because it's through the spleen that the vagus nerve gets rid of inflammation. So if you're on a medication that's lowering inflammation in your body, it probably means your vagus nerves are damaged or the nerve impulses aren't getting through. So you should look into cervical vagopathy. And this just shows that there's so many things in the internal organs that are under the guidance of the vagus nerve. And then basically, Hauser's law when applied to autoimmune diseases. So one of Hauser's laws is when the etiology of symptoms is elusive, following the neurology leads to ligamentous joint instability as the cause. So somebody has autoimmune disease, the cause is unknown. If you follow the neurology of where the immune system is. So about, and this is, differs depending on who you read, but about 70, 75% of the immune system is actually in the bowel wall. So if you think about is the easiest way for something bad for the body to enter it, is it through the skin? Is it through the eye? Is it through breathing? Or is it through food, right? Something you consume. So that, so in other words, when God designed the body, the easiest way for the body to get damaged is by something that somebody takes by their mouth, right? Your dog eats something, your kids put things in their mouth, right? So around the bowel is what's called gut-associated lymphoid tissue. And it's like an army, just making sure that something bad doesn't get into the body. Well. The gut-associated lymphoid tissue, its innervation is 
through the vagus nerve input to the enteric nervous system. So when the vagus nerve is degenerated, you get in increased intestinal permeability. So now many, many more substances get in and get through to the gut associated lymphoid tissue, which is called GALT, GALT for short. And then basically that lymphoid tissue can start making antibodies against those things that are now getting into the body. And some of those things end up causing an autoimmune disease. So that's why the digestive tract, when you have immunodeficiency or immunodysfunction or autoimmune disease, the first thing that normally is recommended is that a person really clean up their diet, like eat organic, don't eat things with preservatives, try to limit sugar, take a probiotic, take supplements that help repair the digestive system. And if that helps, but it doesn't really resolve it, and somebody has clicking, popping, grinding of the neck, and often with that is other symptoms such as brain fog, head pressure, maybe a little dizziness, tachycardia, then we would say, well, you really should address the cervical destructure or breakdown of the neck curve. And if you do that and you resolve the ligamentous cervical instability by curve correction and prolotherapy, then likely the vagus nerve is gonna function normally, the leaky gut stops, and of course then there's not a reason for the gut to make autoimmune antibodies. And this kind of explains it too, where you have increased intestinal permeability, then the gut-associated lymphoid tissue secretes inflammatory mediators, which ultimately cause systemic inflammation. And some of the signs and symptoms of that is body pain, right? If you're just like, why is my feet swollen or why do I feel swollen? Like almost like you're retaining water. You know, that would be a sign that you have inflammatory substances in your body. And basically this is a normal tight junction. This, this could be like the gut associated lymphoid tissue. See how this now is separated and that's from having an injury to the vagus nerve causing the tight junctions in the mucosal barrier because the barrier in your lungs or your digestive tract are supposed to be very tight. So in the digestive tract, when the tight junctions are spread apart, that's called leaky gut or an increased intestinal permeability. Same thing happens to the lung. Like what causes asthma? Well, asthma likely is caused by leaky lung or increased lung or pulmonary uh, permeability. So in other words, things in the air get Ease, more easily exposed to inside the lung than they should because the tight junctions are separated. So you get a hyper irritable airway, right? Isn't that what asthma is? It's a hyper irritable asthma. Like too many things cause bronchoconstriction and cause increased secretions. So somebody with chronic coughing, it can just be just from the vagus nerve. So the treatment is to resolve the vagus nerve. So this just shows an unstable atlas compressing parts of the vagus nerve and then the impulses. Like here it's showing the impulse is going there but it's not going here. Then how do you determine whether you have vagus nerve degeneration? Healthy vagus nerve, the cross-sectional area is 2.7 but on this one the cross-sectional area is just 0 0.9. So this would be a normal vagus nerve. That's one that has degeneration. Then the treatment is a pro-vagus lifestyle, which just means having loving, caring, peaceful conversations, relationships with a lot of laughter and fun. It means uh, the words one says are a blessing to others. There's not critical words. There's not inflammatory words, if I can use that term and there's just a peacefulness about the person. And the way to measure whether or not somebody's vagus nerve is working good or not is just heart rate variability. So I've done various videos on that. And then if there's a neck structural issue, if somebody has chronic neck pain, it's likely they have ligamentous cervical instability. The way to document that is by digital motion x-ray and the treatment is prolotherapy. 
And that's combined with exercises that give proper neck curvature and some of the things that somebody can do for that is just to raise their computer height and I just call it a face up lifestyle instead of a face down lifestyle.